Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today we're going to be adding a layer of conversation on the RPE for beginners with three easy tips for beginners to begin utilizing RPE in their program. So if you've been following along our YouTube channel or any of our content streams for a little while, you know that we are heavily biased towards the RPE strategy for programming and for good reason. We'll get into it in other videos, but Didier did a fantastic video discussing the RPE utility for beginners. And I'd highly recommend checking that out. It's a bit of a misconception in our industry that RPE should be exclusively used with more advanced lifters. However, we believe that's just incorrect. Everybody gets started with RPE training. You go to the gym, you try lift weights. If it feels good, you go heavier. If it's too heavy, you, you reduce either the reps or the amount of weight that you're using on that specific exercise. We all got into it this way. Why can't we begin to systemize this strategy and actually start to understand how we are feeling in the process of lifting weights? Because ultimately that self-awareness is what's gonna get us towards the goal of being stronger, being more jacked over time. We need to understand ourselves in the process of gaining. So today we're actually just going to be unpacking three easy tips for you as a beginner to start to utilize RPE in your training. The first tip doesn't even require that you use a program. We know that a lot of beginners out there aren't currently using programs. I certainly didn't start lifting weights with a program. It was just Charlie and myself down at the local gym, GSAC. Uh, we used to ride our bikes there and lift weights on the weekend or after footy training, but we weren't following a program for good reason. We didn't know what the fuck we were doing. We were just in the gym lifting weights with our mates. So if you're not following a program, that's fine. We can still begin to build the RPE skill set in your training. And the first step is simply just being objective with how you're feeling at the end of your set. I'd highly recommend uh, once you've completed a set, you just sit there for 10 to 15 seconds and think how hard was that? and then simply give it a rating out of 10. It will be best if we can begin to record some of the sets and reps that we are completing and the RPEs, because then we can actually start to begin to make progress week on week. But even if you're not doing that, you can still build the skill set by simply selecting your RPEs at the end of your set. I'd highly recommend doing this with all of your sets, whether it be a warm up set, a top set where you're pushing to failure, at the bottom of a drop set or the end of a failure set, uh, in something like a tricep extension or bicep curl, I'd highly recommend selecting your RPEs at the end of your set on every single set. And if you're sitting there thinking, oh, I'm not gonna be accurate, I'm gonna make all these mistakes, it's, it's gonna be a waste of time. Ultimately, that's not the case. Making mistakes is part of the process of learning RPEs. We, the coaches here at Strength Culture, actually want you to make mistakes because making those mistakes and being corrected and, and learning from them is actually what's going to start to create those boundaries for your own selections. And over time, those mistakes and those, those learning processes allow you to become more accurate. RPE is a skill set, and like any other skill set, you're going to make mistakes early on, you're going to make large mistakes, small mistakes, but the important thing is that you learn from them and actually get more accurate over time. No one, it doesn't matter how advanced or how new to RPE you are, is making 100% uh, correct decisions consistently. Everyone is making mistakes. I know what I want and I want it now. All right, Donnie's got another sandwich. Is that still recording? The second easiest strategy to get started with RPE training is simply use things like RPE ranges. And I've got a few examples here that we're gonna go through, but for this one, we probably need to have some understanding of what you're doing in a session. However, again, we don't specifically need to be uh, following a program or have any specific goals from the onset. We can simply just begin to constrain what we're trying to achieve within a set. So for an RPE range, we're typically going to be looking for RPEs above an RPE 5. Uh, this is where the science tells us that most of both the hypertrophy and strength adaptations are occurring. And that means that we should be in somewhat close proximity to failure. If we're doing really, really easy sets, 
it's not difficult enough to actually cause and, and create some adaptations in the system, unless you are a brand new beginner. If you've got a little bit of training under your belt, we probably need to actually start to push our training a little bit hard. So a lot of the prescriptions will be above an RPE of five as we're going through here. But an RPE range is simply a wide target for you to try to land on for your RPE uh, within a set. So we have on the left hand side here, these would just be one RPE range uh, brackets. We have an RPE five to six, where we're looking to land somewhere between a five to a six RPE. We have an RPE six to seven, so it's gonna be a little bit harder than a five to six, but again, it's still a one RPE range. And then we have here a seven to an eight. These ranges are the most versatile way for you to utilize RPE in your training. It gives you a wider target for you to try to land on, which ultimately allows you to actually build your way into a set and start to accumulate a little bit of data in the actual set where you can become more accurate throughout the set. On the other side here, we have a wider bracket. This would be a six to an eight. So we've actually got two RPE points similar here to a seven to a nine. And then something else that's a very simple way in which you can use RPEs to start with is using something like a six plus or a seven plus, where we're looking to just pass that threshold for an intensity or a relative intensity to failure, but we've really left it wide open. We've given you a really open area for you to access for the target of that RPE within this set. So this would be the most versatile way in which you can use RPE for for beginners. Also, the probably the most versatile way for you to use RPE for anyone. Again, this skill set isn't just specific to beginners or advanced. Learning these strategies and learning these traits of training can really improve your outcomes long term. And it is something that we'd highly recommend that you invest time and effort into. Does it make it look like Didier is really short? I'll stand up, fuck it, I'll stand up. <laughs> so as we've already discussed, and again, if you listen to Didier's video before watching this, we'd highly recommend it. But the whole crux of RPE training is that you're learning to understand how close you are to failure. And, and it's, it's true failure from a mechanical standpoint. You simply just can't produce enough force to lift the weight anymore. It's not a technical failure. It's, it's nothing like that. It's simply you're just not strong enough to produce any more force. The easiest way for us to learn where failure is, is to simply take ourselves to failure. So including things like AMRAPs and drop sets and all of these strategies in your training program from a beginner standpoint is a fantastic strategy for you to learn where you are within proximity to failure. So we're actually just gonna take Didier through what we would do with a beginner client. So we're gonna set up for a push up. It's a really easy exercise for you to push to failure because it's self limiting. And I'm just gonna get Didier to tell me when he thinks he has five reps left when he thinks he has three reps left, and then when he thinks he has one rep left. And we're just gonna roll through this set. We're gonna get a few reps, uh, push ups out here, so we're gonna just go through a few other exercise selections where AM wraps would be a good choice. Things that are self limiting, where you're simply just going to fail and not get hurt. Things like chin ups, push ups, arm training, even things like he reckons he's got five left, I reckon he's lying. We're gonna get closer than five. Tell us when you got three left. Two left. Two left now, he reckons. Nah, you got more, come on. Go again. Push, push, and again, and again. Push, you got it. Get it. Ah! He's done it. Nice. So he was not accurate there. He had, I think it was six reps left from failure. So that was good, but that is exactly what we would do. And then as we're going through the set, we're calling RPEs, we're thinking about it. Was that a true 10, you reckon? I think it was a true 10. I think it was a true 10. We had to chuck the grunt in for performance enhancement. There we go. So um, it, it is the easiest way for you to learn where failure is, is simply take yourself to failure. I will just finish that point. You're best to use exercises and select exercises which are self-limiting, not things like squats and deadlifts and bench press where you may actually hurt yourself because you've got a bar on your shoulders or you're holding a bar, you're in provocative positions for shoulder position or lower back. Things like push-ups, chin-ups, curls and, and, and extensions, lateral raises, all of these really easy, simple movements are your best bet for selecting uh, arm wraps and drop sets on definitely not big, heavy compound lifts. But arm wraps are a fantastic strategy for beginners to start to learn the skill set.
of selecting RPEs. So there's three easy tips for you to begin using RPE within your program if you are a beginner. Number one is simply just select your RPEs at the end of your training sets. Number two is to utilize RPE ranges, which give us a larger bracket or a larger target for us to try to hit in order to be somewhat accurate with our RPEs. The third strategy was using something like an AMRAP that we did with Diddy Air on push-ups, on chin-ups, pull-downs, lateral raises and arm training, uh, where we can actually take yourself to failure and throughout that set, you're accumulating data in order to get more accurate over time. RPE is a fantastic strategy. We do believe it is probably one of the most pivotal things that you can learn from a strength training perspective. The gift of self-awareness is like no other. Learning how close you are to failure in all of life's tasks uh, is a really valuable tool and it's no different for strength training and, and hypertrophy training in the gym. Push yourself close to failure, but don't tip over that edge. Uh, finding that fine line is the most important thing. So if you have any questions, drop them down below. If you are new to training and you wanna learn some of these strategies, we highly recommend getting in contact. If you're near our gym, come down, come do some sessions, whatever you need to do to get involved, learn the skill set because it will set you up for success down the road. But other than that, happy lifting. Let's go, done. <laughs>